My name is Morten and this is my journey into photographing the stars and deep sky objects. Today we're going to talk about dithering and how you configure PHD2 guiding and astrophotography tool to use it. First of all, I must point out that I'm not an expert in this area. And if you want to go in depth in the technology behind dithering, I'm sure there are a lot of videos out there describing it in greater detail than this one. Right, a good place to start is the online user guide for astrophotography tool. Here you will find explanations for all the settings in that particular software and also a slight background on how Dithering works. So what is dithering? Dithering is a feature that will ever so slightly shift position of your telescope and by that also your camera a few pixels or some pix pixels in a random direction between each exposure or whatever you have configured it to in order to try and cancel out the fixed pattern noises that can be present in your subframes. A fixed pattern noise can be dust signs, hot or cold pixels, banding noise or something similar. What will happen then is that your pattern noise will be randomized between each subframe instead of appearing at exactly the same pixel on your sensor. The objects that you want to preserve your signal will be aligned in the processing afterwards when you're using, for example, Deep Sky Stacker. This will allow the noise that has now become random to be effectively filtered out or cancelled out by algorithms such as sigma clipping pixel rejection, for example. That will make your final image much, much less noisy and you will get rid of these hot or cold pixels. So let me give you some examples. Let's say I'm outside imaging. The temperature is around minus 3 degrees Celsius and I'm using my DSLR Canon 60D. The first sub-exposure that I take, uh, about 4 minutes, will have a sensor temperature of around 3 or 4 degrees Celsius. The second will have a temperature uh, around 7 degrees Celsius. And then it will rise to about let's say 12 to 15 degrees Celsius in exposure number 4 and going forward. This is because the sensor heats up when you take long exposures with a DSLR. This also means that you will have uh, different temperatures for each subframe even though the difference will be much smaller if you continue to image during the night. If you have a dedicated astro camera, you will cool the sensor to, let's say, 
around uh, minus 10 or minus 20 degrees Celsius and uh, the cooling will keep the sensor temperature constant during the imaging session. Since I'm using a DSLR and the temperature or heat will be much higher on the sensor that also mean that I will have more noise than if I would be to use a dedicated astro camera. As you can see in this example of the Andromeda Galaxy, this was actually the very first light that I took as an astrophotographer using my Canon DSLR and my EvoStar 80ED refractor. As you can see in this image, we have a lot of noise. We have a lot of fixed pattern noise and it's pretty bad, I would say. I was not using dithering when taking this. If I zoom in, you will see the noise more apparent. There's a lot of running noise or walking noise in this image. And a lot of this would have been cancelled out if I would have been using dithering at the time of imaging this one. Some of this can of course be processed out, but far from everything. This is the mini PC that I'm using for image acquisition and I can connect to it through Wi-Fi from the comfort on, of my home or on uh, a laptop of choice or even on my mobile phone if I'm going outside to do, for example, a polar alignment and don't want to bring my computer. First we open PHD2 guiding, click on the tools menu and make sure that enable server is selected. Then you click on the guide menu Click on advanced settings and check dither settings. Make sure that you have random selected and also check to see what you have in the scale setting. If you're using astrophotography tool of the latest version like I'm using, that will have a dithering distance setting that will allow you to control or set the exact number of pixels to move. If you're using another software or an older version that does not have a setting for the exact amount of pixels, uh, but you have a setting that let's say have normal, aggressive or uh, fixed levels of dithering, you might need to adjust the scale here in order to get the right amount of pixel movement. We will come into that later on. Moving over now to astrophotography tool. First you want to connect your gear, maybe your scope, maybe your focuser if you have such Make sure your camera is connected and everything. And then click on guide settings. Now in this dialog you will select guiding program to PHD to guiding. You will set auto dithering to on. And now we're going to set the dithering distance. Now here's where it becomes interesting. Before we move on, I would like to open a new web page for you. And that is astronomy.tools. In here you can click on calculators and click on the CCD suitability calculator. 
What we're going to do now is to calculate the image scale of your imaging scope and your guide scope in order to calculate the dithering factor between the two. So first of all you select your main scope. I have the Skywatcher Evo Star ATED. I scroll through it. I have the Canon 60D. I don't have the modified DA but it's the same pixel size and sensor. I have a focal length of 600 millimeters for my telescope but I also have the 0.85 field flattener reducer installed. That will give me an image scale of 1.74 arc seconds per pixel. Now, if I take my guide scope, that is the Evo Guide 50ED, and I'm using the ZWO ASI 120mm mini guide cam, that will give me a focal length of 242. The pixel size is 375. I don't have a, a reducer. And that will give me an image scale of 3.2 arc seconds per pixel. Now, if I bring up the calculator and calculate 3.20 divided by 1.74, that was the image scale of my Canon. It will give me a dithering factor of 1.84 rounded. Let's say that I now want to dither at least 15 pixels on my main imaging camera. Because what you need to take into consideration is that when you're dithering, you're telling the mount according to the guide scope and the guide camera to move a certain amount of pixels. And those pixels will be the guide camera pixels. So you will have to take the difference between the two into consideration. So if you want to move your main camera 15 pixels, I'm typing in 15 pixels, and I know that I have a, a dithering scale of divided by 184 between my guide camera and my main imaging camera, that will give me a number saying that if I want to move my main camera 15 pixels I need to move my guide camera 8 pixels. So going back to astrophotography tool I'm going to have to set a dithering distance of 8 pixels in order to move my main imaging camera 15 pixels. Next settings, dithering stability. Uh, I'm not changing this, it's the default setting. The dithering settling time, that's just extra time between dithering and resuming normal guiding and imaging. You can also set a, a dithering timeout and that is the amount of time that astrophotography tool will wait to continue with the next exposure no matter what your current guiding status is. The default setting 
right now in my version 3.9 is 180 but I've set this to 60 seconds. And then you will have to enter how many images to take before making dithering. And if you set this to zero or one, it means that astrophotography tool will dither after each image. If you set it to two, astrophotography tool will dither every other image. So how many images can you take before dithering, you might ask? Well, as I understand it, if you're taking a lot of short exposures, for let's say 30 or 60 or even 90 seconds, you might uh, want to set your dithering to every other or possibly even every third or fourth image. If you don't do that, keep in mind that dithering can take up to 30 or 60 seconds, which means that if you're taking 30 second exposures, you will basically double the amount of imaging time that you need to take into consideration. If you're using longer exposures, three, four or five minutes, you should absolutely dither between each frame, I would say. So the rest of the settings I kept at the default settings. You have the PhD IP address, that's your local IP, the same computer might be different on your, in your environment, uh, the PhD to port that it uses. And when you're finished, you just click OK. Now, when you're imaging PhD2 and astrophotography tool will do the dithering for you automatically. But I think you should keep in mind that you may have to adjust some of these settings in order to make everything work with exactly your scope and your guide camera. That can be the dithering stability, that can also be the timeout or settling time, it can also be the auto cancel distance. So keep that in mind and uh, I wish you the best of luck with your dithering. If you're new to this channel and you like my content and want to see more about my astrophotography journey, I hope you want to subscribe to this channel. And also if you have any comments on my content so far or what you want to see in the future, please leave a comment below and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you, see you in the next video and I wish you clear skies.